keep it until the 14th day of this month when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roast it on the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, its head with its legs and its inner parts, and you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, whoops, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. All right? So who can sum up what the Passover is? Uh, it's where you take the blood and you like, put it on the door, like the blood of a lamb. A one-year-old lamb. That's right. That's male. male. Without blemish. Right? And um, then you take the skin or the flesh and you like roast yeah. it and stuff and it can't be raw. Um, you have to eat it all for the morning, and if you don't, then you have to burn it all. That's right. All right. So, just to review. So, you have one, this is really important, a male lamb, one, years, one year old, and perfect, as perfect as it can be. You bring it into your house, and then a few days later, you're going to slaughter that one-year male, or that one-year one male lamb, and you're going to take the blood, and you're going to put it on the doorpost, okay? And after that, you're going to take the lamb and you're going to roast it. You roast it whole, and anything left over is then burned so that it's it's not left. There's nothing that remains. And what God says is that as He was about to strike the Egyptians with one final blow to let to make sure and make clear to Pharaoh that he needed to let his people go and set them free, while showing the whole land of Egypt, Israelites and Egyptians alike, that he is the God of all gods and there is no God like him. He would pass over all the homes and not strike anybody in the homes of those that had the sacrificial blood of the lamb. All right, so now think about the words we're saying. We're talking about a perfect lamb that, sacrificed, that was sacrificed and shed its blood. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. It sounds like Jesus. Yes. Because now we're going to fast forward to the night on which Jesus was betrayed. The night before he was going to be unfairly put on trial. And then accused of, you know, just horrendous things. And he's going to take everybody, the weight of the sin of the world upon him. And they're going to crucify him. Was Jesus not perfect? He was perfect. He was a male. And he was young. I guess we're going to throw that in there. He wasn't that old. But he was now the sacrificial lamb of God to take away the sins of the world so that God would now pass over our sins. And as he's getting ready to do all that, he establishes and institutes the Lord's Supper. He takes the Passover and now says this with the unleavened bread. We didn't read about that, but they were to make unleavened bread, bread without yeast, so that it was like flat bread. Because with yeast, it takes time. They didn't have time. So God instructs them to make bread without yeast so that they can eat it with this meal. All right? So he takes the unleavened bread that is a part of the Passover meal and the wine that becomes a part of the Passover meal. And he takes the unleavened bread and he breaks it and he gives thanks and he gives it to his disciples. And this time he says, take and eat. Okay, that makes sense. It's the Passover. But then he says, this is my body given for you, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he takes the cup that was a part of the meal. 
He passes it around. No surprise, they would have passed this cup around. And it's filled with wine. And he says, take and drink. This is my blood shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. What is Jesus doing with the Passover meal? He's now making it into something that's not just a meal to remember what happened, but also where we can constantly take part and he is truly present and offers us real forgiveness of sins. So you can see now the connection with the Passover and with uh, the Lord's Supper. In fact, every Monday, Thursday, that's technically the time of Passover because we still do the Passover, we still do Easter at the same time of the year. It's all, it's all focused around a full moon. So it's, it's focused on the calendar and then a certain full moon, that's when Easter is. That's why Easter is not at the same time every year. You know, Christmas is always December 25th, right? That never changes. So it's December 25th, whether December 25th is on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever. But Easter is always on Sunday morning, the day of resurrection, following that Thursday night when Jesus would have had that Passover meal. So that will change. Sometimes it's in late March. Sometimes it's in April. It depends on that full moon. Okay? Is it making sense? All right, well, while you just kind of like sift through all that, I'll let you take a break for a few minutes, all right? So is it bitter herb? No, no, the wine was still the bitter herbs. Monday? 